and blood running out the nose and holding hands. Forget that! Forget that! Brothers, forever! My pal! I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sorry. I, I didn't mean to, you know, I get carried away, you just, you were been kind of chicken me up, you know? No, no, no. For, forget it. All that goes on. All that, did you get a wee bit of that? You know, a wee bit of that nonsense. I think the government's been right to lock down the pubs and restaurants for people of alcohol. They forget about social distancing and the virus spreads. It does indeed. Now, Kareem, you're talking about Carlisle. In the uh, First World War, I think it was, after the First World War, there was huge, huge drunkenness in Carlisle. And the pubs didn't seem to be able to cope. So the government took over the pubs. And it was a friend of mine's father who was one of the guys, uh, you know, who was, who was looking after all that. And uh, the government took over the pubs, watered down the beer, tightened the rules and told people what was what, and the drunkenness tailed off a bit, you know. <clears throat> Mind you, as you know, you could have a good few English beers before you got in the state you were in with Scottish beer, you know what I mean? There we are, Oscar Bowman. Thank you for that. But unfortunately, we can't uh, go down that road. So there you are. We are a national and international show. But it's very kind of you to say. Very kind of you to say. Off sales and alcohol will be going through the roof. But not to heat, if we start educating people, and they could do it. You know, I mean, you've got your chief medical officers, your first minister, You've got all your big personalities there who could go on and start to say, think about giving up booze. You know, and if they did it properly, not in any patronizing way or anything like that. Scotty, do you have any tattoos? Um, no, I don't, Kareem, to be honest with you. Um, I was just wondering, um, I, I put this out as a subject once, would you trust somebody with a tattoo? You know, uh, so no, I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't have any tattoos. I wouldn't put my body through that. Tattoos used to be your big, tough guys. A lot of um, a lot of seamen had tattoos. When I was young, I walked on the boats, and my bosses and all that. They uh, they had great big arms, a bit like McClue, you know, the big the big arms. And that anchors and everything tattooed in the back. I also wouldn't because I've got mild psoriasis present from my lovely late father who I adored. So it's not a problem. But I've got mild psoriasis and the skin is very, very absorbent. You're a bit like Rab C. Nisbet there, says Anthony. Yes, Anthony. A wee bit of acting. There we are. Acting ghast. I have six. Ah, Kareem. Excellent. Well, there we are. Why did you get them? Uh, after the lockdown, we need to just get on with life. The numbers will continue to rise and fall for a long time. But we can't keep going into lockdown every few weeks. I think if we'd all obeyed it in the early days and they'd locked us down quickly enough, um, we'd probably have been in a much stronger position. I'm not sure the virus will continue. We don't know. It may well fizzle out. So there we are. Partly if you keep your windies open and let the air circulate, what have you, you know. You see, smoking in pubs, the virus would have gone through that because it was smoking was a great conductor for things. You don't remember you used to, uh, I think I picked up a cold in the pub the other night. Place was heaving, you know. Vaccine supposed to be out in June for people. Well, Kareem, I mean, how do we know we can trust a vaccine that has been developed very, very quickly? I mean, some people are going to make a lot of money out of coronavirus. I can tell you. But then they would do that anyway. We had war profiteers in the First and Second World War. Now then, let's see what's happening.
I'll just see what's happening here. We're talking about an inhaled vaccine, for goodness sake.